Buongiorno a tutti, benvenuti al Parlamento europeo, è con grande piacere che vi porgo a nome di tutti i deputati, mio personale, il benvenuto nella nostra aula, anche se in una modalità diversa, nuova, inedita. Voglio ringraziare il programma Euroscuola per il suo impegno, per incoraggiare voi giovani a parlare di Europa, ad esprimere la vostra opinione sulla democrazia europea, sui diritti fondamentali, sui nostri valori comuni e su tutte le tematiche che vi stanno a cuore. Stiamo vivendo una situazione straordinaria, inaspettata, che ci ha condotto in questi mesi a prendere delle decisioni senza precedenti, ad adeguare i nostri strumenti, a definire delle nuove politiche che corrano di pari passo con le esigenze e le necessità di tutti i cittadini europei. La democrazia non può essere sospesa, soprattutto nel mezzo di una crisi drammatica come questa, il vostro incontro oggi nella prova palese. È un grande piacere vedere tanti ragazzi, tanti giovani come voi che si interessano all'Europa, che dedicano il loro tempo, le loro energie, il loro cuore a sostegno di un'Europa più forte, unita, solidale. Oggi con gli strumenti e i fondi messi a disposizione dall'Unione abbiamo la possibilità di progettare quella nuova Europa, un'Europa che sia più equa, più verde, più digitale, proiettata verso il futuro. Ed è essenziale che voi siate gli attori chiave, perché tante sfide attento, attendono proprio voi, le nuove generazioni. Ed è nostro dovere sentire il peso sulle spalle fin da subito di queste vostre necessità. Today, 94 schools and about 3,000 students are participating. Yes, and I see that the first participants are already on Slido and entering their countries. So we have students participating from Austria, from the Netherlands, Portugal, Bulgaria, Germany, Lithuania. And you can see the number is rising. Good morning, we come from Portugal and our question is, How is the EU planning to revitalize the jobs that were lost due to the coronavirus pandemic and what impact will that have in the youth and employment tax? Thank you. Uh, the Lisbon Convention uh, establishes the right of citizens to, to have their qualifications assessed and prohibits any kind of discrimination in this regard in order to uh, fa facilitate the recognition of the qualifications obtained abroad. Uh, there are many rules and uh, procedures governing the recognition of uh, academic qualifications abroad, which differs from country to country. For example, uh, Italian diploma is recognized only in some states um, for um, admission to universities, while in others uh, it is necessary to, to carry out some exams. My question is, Uh, would it be possible to recognize foreign diplomas in the same way as national diplomas of a country in all European countries? Thank you. In Hungary, uh, we learn a lot of lexical knowledge, those kind of information which we can find on Google easily. For example, classes have many problems which they, aren't can, which they can't handle because we learn only facts, not the way of solutions for everyday problems, like, no, uh, like uh, how to send a letter. We aren't confident and we don't know how should we speak up for ourselves. In our opinion, we need to learn practical things and problem solving for, for everyday life skills. Um, what can the EU do to help us be independent and confident adults when we start our lives? Hallo, ähm, durch die Corona-Pandemie haben die Länder viele Schulden aufgenommen und da wird wahrscheinlich unsere Generation davon betroffen sein. Inwiefern werden die Schulden beglichen und inwiefern werden wir dann eingebunden sein? Guten Tag. <lacht> äh, meine Frage wäre denn, wann wird Kosovo Teil der, des Europäischen Parlaments? Ja, Hello, Indrenas, Kosovo, thank you very much indeed for your question. 
Kosovo. Das müssen vielleicht die anderen, die, die jungen Leute aus den anderen uh, Perhaps I think the young people from other countries in Europe need to understand that young Kosovans are very impatient, and rightly so, because Kosovo is the only country in the continent where we don't have a sort of visa liberalization regime. There are some five countries in the continent that uh, are sort of dragging their feet. Some of them are large countries in Europe when it comes to extending the visa liberalization regime, even though Kosovo has done all that was uh, required of it from Europe when it comes to security and other issues too. I mean, it would take too much time to go into all the details, but Kosovo has kept its uh, side of the bargain, and I think there's no real reason to refuse that to Kosovo and the young people that we've just seen. Um, have expectations. They want to be able to enjoy the freedom to travel, and of course, Kosovo is very impatient. Uh, um, wants to accede to the European Union. No, I can't give you uh, any figures or give you any dates. But presumably not before the next elections, 2024. We've had some rather unfortunate experience with uh, attempts to accede to the EU, and I think we're going to have to lay greater emphasis on the fulfillment of certain requirements before accession can take place. I'm not talking about visa liberalization, but I think a certain number of conditions will uh, need to be uh, met, and we'll have to keep up the pressure post-accession. So I think we're going to have to take a closer look, and I think uh, uh, Kosovo is well placed. Um, I think as others will have realized, um, virtually all uh, young people in Kosovo can speak English or German, excellent German, or even French. There's a high percentage of people speaking other languages in Kosovo. And that is why I, uh, I support cooperation with Kosovo, the, the, the single Kosovo-German school exchange program that I am supporting. There is an issue when it comes to religious tolerance. I think um, it's good news for the continent that uh, um, conflicts are not being engaged in on religious lines. I think we moved beyond that. In, in Kosovo, we had Christmas lights. Um, so I think that the conflict is not being waged along religious lines, and I think that is an excellent news. Um, um, I mean, there'd be much to say on the subject of Kosovo. It's a sort of self-standing issue. I mean, we could talk a lot about it, but uh, uh, I certainly wish you every success. Uh, maybe can you tell us, Mr. Wieland, is the EU focusing on techno technological development enough and innovation in order to make it the first job destination for young Europeans? The most popular question is from Clara. One problem the youth has been facing is the entrance in the labor market. How will the EU assure institutions giving give lasting jobs, providing financial and social stability? Wir eine Frage auf Slido, die bereits 57 mal geliked wurde von Anna Maria. Sie würde gern wissen, what does it take for a young person to join the European Parliament? A very different topic this time. It's from Mafalda, and the question is: Migrants are discriminated against when looking for jobs, especially young people. How are you thinking about acting? Okay, let's carry on with another question from Zoltan from Hungary. We all see that the post-Brexit neg negotiations are still going on, and the question from Zoltan is: How can the EU support all those uni students who are still studying right now in the UK as European citizens? After the Brexit, what will happen with their studies? When the European Parliament was confronted with this issue, uh, I mean, we were not sideways when we saw the result of the referendum. I wasn't expecting it. I mean, had I put money on it, I'd have lost the money when it comes to the upshot of the Brexit referendum. And the initial reflex of the European Parliament was, I mean, there are important issues, the internal market, uh, that's being discussed, but there were two things that were really important as far as we're concerned, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and um, not to 
important perhaps in the context of this question. But the other thing was what's going to happen with the first three million uh, um, Britons living in elsewhere in the European continent and members of other countries living in the UK, some three million. And we want we wanted to achieve a situation where as little as possible would change. When it comes now to German or Hungarian students who are studying currently in the UK, uh, their studies will continue as will the studies of uh, Britons living abroad who are studying abroad. And we're doing what we can to ensure that that happens. I think a certain number of decisions have been taken in that respect. And the other issue, of course, is the atmosphere, that of the general atmosphere. What we're hearing from the UK since the referendum is that the atmosphere has changed considerably, that people who've been living in the UK for 30, 40 years are being met with hostility, and that's not good news, of course. There's another question on Slido. It's coming from Maria in Portugal, and she actually suggests to create an Erasmus program for high school students already, so not only for university students, but earlier, in order to engage in a multilateral brain migration, she says, so that, that students can exchange through the EU. What do you think? I have a good news for you, because actually uh, the European Parliament uh, has reached the deal on Erasmus+. Plus. Um, only uh, last week uh, to, in the negotiations uh, together with the um, uh, Council. Um, the European Parliament was uh, very successful because it has managed to uh, s already to secure 2,2 uh, billion more um, which goes to 26 billion uh, budget for Erasmus Plus for the next uh, seven years to 2027. Moreover, uh, the Erasmus Plus uh, scope was also enlarged, so it could include not only um, pupils from a high education, uh, and um, as well, uh, it, is a, it is a success because uh, this Erasmus Plus uh, is um, more inclusive. So this was also something that the uh, members of the European Parliament were very keen on, and namely to make sure that um, the uh, program will uh, also be accessible from people uh, with uh, disabilities or vulnerable people from uh, um, coming from minorities. And um, Moreover, uh, it is a very um, ambitious Erasmus Plus because the idea is to uh, triple the number of participants uh, in the new program uh, and reach uh, 12 million. So we can consider that this is um, already a good news for young people. Now the vote is open. Okay, there we see 43% for the first idea that we already read. We have 246 participants. Please continue because now you have the possibility to actively shape this event to do EU policies. And the vote is closed. Yes, we have a clear winner with 54%. Our, the, the, your favorite idea is the EU should give young people more work experience at a young age. With early internships, young people can experience how a job works. So I thank you uh, all for your uh, participation. You are all uh, digital natives. You are all used to be uh, connected, to talk, uh, to discuss, uh, to play uh, online to study also online now. Uh, we, as the European Parliament, we had to learn quite fast during this uh, pandemic how to move entirely uh, online, uh, not only with uh, communication, but uh, also as representatives of uh, European uh, democracy. And this is very important. Uh, I would say it's even more important than ever, as Mr. Sassoli said also in March, we have to keep uh, the, the European democracy uh, alive and vital 
uh, democracy has to win uh, over uh, COVID-19, over the virus. And this is why I appreciate that you were participating this morning here with us, that you uh, came with your own engagement, with your ideas. Thanks for sharing them with other Europeans, with us, uh, with the members of the European uh, uh, Parliament. As we have seen for the issue of education and, and youth employment, you have innovative ideas uh, to tackle uh, one of the most uh, urgent topics uh, for the European Union at the moment. And that's a priority for the European Parliament too. Especially future generations are confronted with a rapidly changing job market. Uh, they need to be prepared for new digital and global uh, working environments with uh, the different programs to promote uh, opportunities, uh, to promote uh, skills. Uh, the European Union wants to support you, young uh, Europeans, and prepare you uh, for uh, your uh, future. And uh, if you want to go a step further and become active and uh, be in contact with the European Parliament for the next uh, years, I would also encourage you to join together.eu, the website together.eu, which in fact is a community of engaged uh, young uh, Europeans. Please have a look and maybe decide to join. Thanks for your attention. Please uh, be in contact with us. We really need your cooperation uh, to shape uh, the future of Europe together. Thank you very much and stay safe.